In D&D, there are a lot of magical items you can obtain that help flesh out your character in a variety of ways. Some of these magic items can come in the form of dangerous yet powerful objects, which can allow you to cast spells, deal extra damage, or make yourself harder to kill. However, not every magical item is so straightforward. In fact, there are some items that are so strange that you might often wonder why such an item exists in the first place. So, in this video, we'll be going over some of the common and uncommon magical items that come off as weird at first glance and explore some of the possible niche uses for such items. The first item to start off this list, at number 10, is the Cloak of Billowing. This is a common, wondrous item which, simply put, lets you dramatically billow the cloak as a bonus action any time while wearing it. On the surface, this item seems to be as useless as useless gets, as it has extremely limited uses outside of combat and basically no use in combat. This isn't an item you would typically hand out to players since, more often than not, your players would want something they could actually make use of, such as potions of healing, which are also common. But if one of your players is playing a character that is being portrayed as a heroic figure, much like your friendly neighborhood superheroes, then perhaps this item isn't so useless after all. You might want this cloak to create a dramatic entrance from the roof of a top of group of bandits hiding out in an abandoned barn while your party backs you up from the front doors. Or perhaps you want to make yourself look more important than you are in front of a crowd as you make a big speech to inspire or instill fear depending on your alignment. And if you wish to do the latter, this item might pair well with another common magic item, the Dread Helm, which just makes your eyes glow red while you wear it. And while neither of these items actually do anything by themselves, they can make for some really good and flavorful roleplay moments that can tip circumstances in your favor just on the merit of how ridiculous you would look pulling it all off in the first place. You might have a performance so good that your DM might decide to give you inspiration or advantage on an intimidation or persuasion roll, for instance. The power of the Cloak of Billowing isn't so much the item itself, but rather, it comes from how the player uses it. And just like how great power comes with great responsibility, great roleplaying comes with great campaigns. Compared to other items on this list, the Cloak of Billowing is actually pretty normal, which is why it only sits at the number 10 spot on this list. And at number 9, we have the Shield of Expression. This is a common magical shield that only differs from a normal shield by being shaped like a face whose expression can be altered using a bonus action while using it. Just like the Cloak of Billowing, there's not really any additional use to be had from the shield other than it having certain expressions on it. However, there might be some fun things you can do with it if you have a spellcaster to in your party who can use Minor Illusion or another similar spell in order to maybe surprise creatures with an animated shield that talks or creates monstrous noises to freak people out or create a distraction. Animate Object and Magic Mouth are both spells that can achieve this, since Animate Object allows you to bring the object to life and control it, while Magic Mouth can be used to implant a message of 25 words or less that can be spoken through a magical mouth that appears on an object when certain triggers are specified. Of course, the only downside is the fact that the Animate Object requires concentration and only lasts for one minute, which doesn't give you a lot of room to utilize it for lengthy periods of time. However, just like the Cloak of Billowing, this item is pretty tame for what it does in comparison to other items on this list. But what makes this item take the number 9 spot on this list is the fact that, despite its odd nature and strange effect, it still acts and provides all of the same benefits of a regular shield, making it useful for combat encounters and generally just looking cool if nothing else. And at number 8, we have the common, wondrous item, the Orb of Time. Just on the name alone, you would think this item would have many untold secrets and mysteries to crack in regards to time itself. Perhaps it could provide some manner to which you could manipulate the flow of time, even if only slightly. But you'd be wrong. All this item does is let you use an action to tell the time of day as long as you're on the material plane. To an ordinary player, Orb of Time might seem misleading at first glance on name alone. However, considering the name itself and the tier it comes from, this item does, at least, what it says on the tin. It tells you if it's morning, afternoon, evening, or nighttime, and nothing else. But that's not to say this item is entirely useless, however. If you and your party find yourself stuck deep underground or inside a dungeon or other interiors that don't provide any way to see outside, and knowing the time of day might be crucial for a plan you might be trying to execute, then the Orb of Time can, at the very least, provide a general idea of the time of day. Outside of that, there aren't really any flavorful uses for the item, but allowing you to, if nothing else, keep track of the relative time of day anywhere on the material plane is, at least, kind of useful if it ever comes up. Which makes its magical effect a tad bit more useful in practice than the Cloak of Billowing or Shield of Expression. And at number 7, we have the Bottle of Boundless Coffee. This is a common wondrous item which carries delicious, warm coffee. The container can only carry coffee produces, which is always warm, and if you try to pour the coffee into another container or bottle, the coffee simply vanishes the moment it leaves the bottle. Also, every time you take a drink, you have a 5% chance for the bottle to outright refuse to dispense its delicious coffee for the next hour. This is another magic item that, on its own, does absolutely nothing but dispense yummy coffee whenever you might need a quick pick-me-up in the morning, or if you need to stay awake for a little while longer at night while you're researching the mysterious scroll or magic item you just found. And while the concept of being able to possess a bottle of forever dispensing coffee might not seem strange in the context of a fantasy setting on its own, 
The weirdness of this item comes from the fact that there aren't any inherent rules for how caffeinated products work in the world of D&D, which means that in order to even be able to make any mechanical use out of this item, your DM would have to be willing to make up rules on what the effects of coffee might have on your character. And depending on how prevalent players want coffee to be relevant in the game, your DM could even make more in-depth rules for how regular exposure to caffeine might affect a character's body over time, maybe even including withdrawal symptoms after a certain point. While this item was only first introduced in Strixhaven, a curriculum of chaos, it could stand to reason that coffee, or other similar products, could potentially exist in other settings as well. So the fact that a magic item dedicated to being able to drink coffee at any time and anywhere even exists while having no rules on what the effects of coffee even has on a player is kind of strange. However, this is essentially remedied by homebrewing your own pot of rules as a DM if you decide to introduce this item into the game. Perhaps you can have coffee suppress a single level of exhaustion for a short amount of time while making it easier for the player to accumulate additional levels of exhaustion if they continue to avoid taking long rests, for example. Either way, as strange as this item is, it is definitely a fun flavorful item to give to a character that might possess a flaw where they need caffeine in order to function properly throughout the day so they can finish writing their script for a new play, for instance. Scurrying around at number 6, we have the Hat of Vermin. This is a common wondrous item that holds 3 charges, which all get regained every dawn, and summons your choice of a bat, a frog, or a rat for 1 hour, or when its hit points drop to 0. Once summoned, the creature will appear in a non-friendly, non-hostile state inside the hat and will attempt to get away from you as quickly as possible and is uncontrollable. The strangeness of this item mostly comes from the fact that it allows you to willingly choose to summon a creature whose sole purpose is to get as far away from you as possible. Usually, when you summon a creature, you want it to either attack enemies, or support you and your party members through special buffs that only the summoned creature could provide. So, summoning a creature that wants you to escape from your clutches is pretty unconventional with some very niche uses. You could summon a rat while hiding in a dark corner in order to scare or distract a room of guards or commoners, as their focus would be set upon the rat while you sneak past undetected, for instance. However, because the creature acts on its own and isn't controlled by anyone, there is the downside of this being too unpredictable and unreliable to use consistently as a distraction. Not to mention the fact that all of the available creatures are low threats that have extremely low hit points, meaning someone can just kill the rat in an instant or simply ignore it. You could, theoretically, try to bait one of the creatures into a suspected trap in order to spring it if you don't have any means of disabling it, as none of the creatures you can summon would even have any clue what a trap is. Its only goal in life is to get away from you. The reason this item sits in the number 6 spot, however, is due to the fact that most summoned creatures can at least be told to perform certain tasks if nothing else. Even fiends summoned by lesser or greater demon spells will attack anything, including your allies, unless you take special care as to create arcane circle around yourself to prevent the summoned demons from attacking or targeting you, which can still be considered helpful by having additional bodies on the board, if anything. Hat of Vermin basically goes against the basic mechanics of what you would expect from summoning a creature, especially through a magical item. But considering its rarity is common, it's definitely far from the weirdest item on this list. And at number 5, we have the Pole of Angling. This common item is essentially a normal 10-foot pole which can switch back and forth between being a pole or a fishing rod at a moment's notice. Basically, for a single item, it has two fundamental different uses for it. Having a 10-foot pole is always useful for reaching for something just out of arm's length, for instance. You might even be able to use it to trigger traps or devices from a safer distance, or use it as an improvised weapon if you desperately need to. Though, you might want to be mindful of what you might or might not want to touch with it in some instances. However, on the other hand, you also have a trust and fishing pole you can use to gather food for the whole party if you ever find yourself near a lake with some extra downtime. You can even teach your other party members how to use your pole of angling so they can never go hungry ever again. You could also use a fishing rod to skillfully grab an object that can be hooked that is much more significantly out of reach that not even your 10-foot pole would be able to reach that far. You have a very flexible and versatile item with the pole of angling, which is actually kind of rare for most items in the game, which is why this magic item is a bit stranger than most. In a lot of cases, you would have one item with multiple use cases, such as the immovable rod. However, with the pull of angling, you get to have two commonly used items fit into one singular entity, which both has a variety of different uses attached to them. And the best part is that it saves on space as well for easy storage whenever you need it. So if you and your party own a traveling cart and don't want to deal with the fishing rod taking up unnecessary space, then perhaps a cheap investment in a pull of angling might very well be what you and your traveling companions might need. And at number 4, we have our first uncommon magical item on this list, the Paper Bird. This magical parchment allows you to write a message consisting of 50 words or less and send it off to the location of a recipient of your choosing, whose name you have to utter, as long as they're on the same plane of existence as you, and will try to arrive within 5 feet of its intended recipient via the most direct route available to it. The parchment magically folds into a tiny sized paper bird with 1 hit point, an AC of 13, a flying speed of 60 feet, a dexterity of 16, and a score of 1 in every other stat as well as being immune to poison and psychic damage. As for how you make it, they usually come in small, flat boxes that contain 1d6 plus 3 sheets of parchment, 
which gives you a fair amount to play with if you ever need to send letters out to a specific person. This is definitely one of the more useful magical items on this list with a bit of a cleaner niche behind what its intended use is for. You might find yourself wanting to send a letter back home after a hard fought battle against some demons and you just want to let your friends and family know that you're safe for instance. You can also send an important message to a missing person since nothing in the item's description explicitly states that their whereabouts have to be known, only that they must be on the same plane of existence as you. But there are some limitations to be aware of, however, when it comes to using this item which might make its usage a bit more unreliable. Firstly, the paper bird must travel within 5 feet of its intended recipient so that it can turn into a non-magical inanimate sheet of parchment that can only be unfolded by the one the letter was meant for. As a result, if the recipient is inside an interior in which there is no windows or other obvious openings for the bird to fit inside, then the letter would not be able to arrive. It's not stated whether a paper bird would keep flying around or wait for a moment where a direct route becomes available, so one could assume that it does continue to try to find a direct route. If this is the case, then the only problem to really be on the lookout for is someone seeing the paper bird and nabbing it for themselves. While they won't be able to look at what's written inside the letter, the act of reducing the bird's speed to zero is one of the qualifiers for a turn into ash and never knowing if your letter reaches destination, since there are no rules which allows you to keep track of such things. There are also just generic dangers a paper bird might end up traversing, like through a battlefield or a skirmish, since they might end up being the most direct routes to its recipient. So unless you're trying to send some really important or secret information for one person's eyes only, it might actually be safer and easier to just find a courier and deliver the letter instead. This is definitely one of the weirder magical items on this list, since there's not really any way to be discreet about the paper bird, and there's too much risk that whatever is written on it can just be destroyed due to unfortunate, uncontrollable circumstances, which is why the paper bird takes the number 4 spot on this list. And at number 3, we have the Brooch of Living Essence. This is an uncommon wondrous item which allows you to disguise yourself against other creatures' abilities to detect, through magical means otherwise, the kind of creature you are, or what your alignment is, treating both as humanoid and neutral respectively, even if you aren't either of those things. You can use this item to make sure no one can figure out your true intentions through the means that are beyond your control, which can give you the edge in certain encounters where you might want to hold as many cards to your chest as humanly possible and don't want to risk anyone trying to find out information about you until you're ready. This is an excellent tool that can help you manipulate and act as a mediator between two different factions that might be having a feud and want to disguise your own personal bias towards one that might suit your true alignment or ideals. What makes this item strange, however, is due to the fact that this brooch isn't really necessary for most situations that you might want to use it for, and can actually do more harm than good in some cases, although unlikely. For example, if you're trying to convince the king of something and their court wizard notices the brooch and has some cursory knowledge of magical items, they might assume that you have something to hide and might refuse to work with you until you reveal your true intentions. But that's not to say this item is necessarily bad, however, since you can also wear the brooch to disguise any positive or negative alignment shifts that your character might have the misfortune of being part of. Or if you're a druid that wants to be treated as a humanoid while shapeshifting, then there's also that as well. The second thing that makes the brooch of living essence weird is the fact that it requires an attunement in order to actually be used. To briefly go over what attunement is, since this is the first item on this list that actually requires it, Basically, a certain magic item needs to be focused on for some amount of time before a player can actually make use of it. You must spend a short rest in order to attune or unattune to a magical item, and you can only be attuned to up to three magic items at once. However, you can only attune or unattune to one magic item at a time per short rest. So, being able to only attune to three items can be very limiting, given the sheer amount of magical items there are that require you to attune to them. And there are many magic items that are considered extremely powerful, such as the Pearl of Power, which is also an uncommon magic item that can restore a single spell slot up to 3rd level or lower once per dawn. And if your party has enough items to fill those 3 slots, you might need to start making some decisions and sacrifice more useful slots for the more niche use items such as the Bridge of Living Essence. Of course, this goes for every kind of magical item in the game, which is pretty normal and not weird at all. The weirdness is mainly the fact that you have to attune to this item for an effect that doesn't really do anything outside of extremely niche circumstances, and just a strange effect in of itself. There are very few instances where your actual alignment might be brought into question, unless a campaign specifically uses your alignment in such a way that it can be explicitly measured and weighed. In which case, this item might actually be very useful and can make for some really interesting roleplay. But under normal gameplay, this item's effect is just really out there in terms of what it actually does versus how a game's normally are ran, which is why it takes the number 3 spot on this list. And at number 2, we have the Circlet of Human Perfection. Just like the previously mentioned magical item, this is an uncommon circlet which requires you to attune to it before you can make use of its item, with the only caveat being that you have to be a humanoid in order to do so. Once you've attuned to it and wear it, you automatically transform into an attractive human of average height and weight until the circlet is removed. Whenever you transform, every other physical characteristic such as your age, gender, skin color, hair color, and voice are all chosen by the circlet itself. However, in terms of actual mechanics, only your size can change. So if you were a small-sized creature before, you would become a medium-sized one instead. 
Your stats, racial traits, and items all remain the same while you are transformed. The sticker provides a great way to draw attention to you, especially if you have a high charisma stat. It might even give you an easier time to convince someone to do what you need or want them to do, such as opening an important door or handing over a particular item. You might even use this item to calm someone while they're in a panic if you know you're about to meet them. And on the flip side, you can use the circle to outright lure specific persons into a trap or ambush if they're the type to be enthralled by people. But what makes this item feel so strange is the way it's worded in the description. You transform into an attractive human, which means the item can, somehow, quantifiably measure what is and isn't considered attractive in that realm of existence. How it does this and what it considers attractive, however, is a bit of a nebulous concept, depending on what other people find attractive. If this is the case, then who is this circlet trying to be attractive to in the first place? Of course, in the end, it would probably be up to DM's call to describe how you can be attractive, but even that can be a strange thing to have to do depending on the setting and players involved. Perhaps the magical item itself tricks those around it to make the wearer seem attractive according to the creature's own taste, which would make the most sense, but is not stated to do so. Or maybe the magical item chooses the wearer's characteristics based on what the whole society of the realm would consider attractive. Overall, this is a very vague and nebulous magic item that can be hard to quantify due to the concept of attractiveness being entirely dependent on a personal taste that can't really be boiled down to a single word, which is why this item takes number two spot on this list. And at number one, we have Mood Mark Paint. This is a common wondrous item that allows you to apply a small jar of thick black paint to one creature in the form of markings that resemble the eyes of insects or spiders. It takes one minute to apply the paint and the effects of the paint last for eight hours. As for what the paint itself does, it basically changes colors depending on your mood. So if you're angry, the colors of these markings change to reflect that, for example. And creatures that can see you make a DC 10 wisdom check using their insight in order to discern your current mood, although Dark Elves make this check with advantage. Compared to other items on this list, Moonmark Paint differs from them in that it is something that invents something completely new in terms of game mechanics, while also not having a major impact to the game overall. It might be useful to give it to a character that can't speak or has trouble portraying how they feel at a given time, or maybe use as a way to discern how an animal companion might be feeling at the current moment, since there's no restriction on what kind of creature you can apply the paint to. This magical item exists completely for flavor and serves no real use in combat, but could make for some really good campaign moments. For example, you might encounter a tribe that frequently uses this paint as part of their daily routine, or even as a way to test an initiate's resolve to determine whether or not they are worthy of joining that tribe or group. And if that initiate shows any sign of fear, they wouldn't be able to hide that fact and fail the initiation, as the paint would change into the color which dictates fear. Out of every item on this list, the Moonmark paint definitely has the most potential for flavor and roleplay options, while providing a new toy to play with, mechanic-wise, which is what makes this item strange, unique, and very creative. It's more flexible in how you can use the item than something like the Cloak of Billowing, while also being more defined in what it represents in the circlet of human perfection. The only thing about the Moonmark paint that needs to be determined by your DM are the colors, but this isn't nearly as hard to quantify than what a circlet considers attractive by any means. Overall, there are many items with strange effects, but the Moonmark paint definitely deserves number one spot on this list for its flavorful potential compared to the other items on this list. Alright, and that's it. What are some of your other favorite items with effects you consider weird? And if you have any ideas for future top 10 videos, I'd love to hear about them down in the comment sections below.